Hello everybody and welcome to another episode oh, of Mix Miles and Man. Man. Hope you're doing well, hope you're keeping us nice safe. I'm here today with my little Riley boy. Um, you're off on a half term. So by the time this comes through, we, 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 we'll be <laughs> we'll get to you in just two seconds. Um, by the time we get to this, it, we'll be into Christmas, I expect. Um, we'll do that very, very shortly. Um, so today's video, we're going to be doing the Ransom Ajax Mark IV, um, putting it back together. It's been sat in the shed for about four days, um, let that paint go nice and hard. And uh, hopefully we can now get this machine put all back together um, and, and get a bit of a test run. That'd be the idea of the video. I, I might have to refer back to my own videos to see how it all goes back together because there are some little bits that I'm not 100% sure of in my head because it has been four or five days. But uh, hopefully by the time I get it all catalogued for you guys, you won't have to muck about. You just better watch the video. Simple as that. Um, if this is the first time I'm watching Mixed Mouse Man, man, hit the old subscribe button and whack the old bell. <laughs> that way you'll be told one done a video or two of them on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. Right, so what do you want to show the guys? You show the guys, what are you showing them? Uh, how many? Fireworks. Fireworks, where's that from then? Uh, dead dog. Mm -hmm. How much is it? You don't like fireworks, do you? You don't like fireworks. What noise does the firework make? <laughs> yeah, exactly, you don't like them. We might, we might get some, maybe we we'll get some, some sparklers, eh? Yeah. You don't, you don't mind running around a garden like a loony with sparklers? What about that one? That's a, uh, a carnival selection box. Here's everything. There's no prices on here either, Riley. A price? I want a price. No, not price. Price is. What's that oh, there we are. How much is the uh, carnival selection box? Uh, rainbow. Carnival selection box. Uh, it's only seven quid or three for 18. That's bigger than that. We might get one. We'll see. We'll see how we get <laughs> on. We might get one. We'll see. I know, I know you don't like them. <laughs> So anyway, um, Riley Boy is in full tilt for Halloween, but by the time this video comes out, Halloween would have been, been and gone. Because uh, we are about two or three months in advance on, on the videos. Yes, buddy. I saw that in my order. That might be order. Uh, we order? I don't know. You tell me. How many tables are you? Uh, what's it called? So mummy ordered Halloween decorations, yeah. tablecloth. Tablecloth. Yeah. Uh, plates, cups. Plates, cups. Yeah. Fire, blue, spider, uh, blooms, uh, plate, a plate, egg, cupcakes. and cupcakes. Fantastic. There you go. So you're, you're all Halloween ready to go, aren't you? Oh, dove. And we've got a ghost, yeah. Okay. And what are you dressing up as? A zombie. A zombie this year. Daddy cool. ordered one. Daddy ordered, yeah, ordered especially for you. I did. That's right. So that's what we're going to be doing um, in the next coming next next weekend is Halloween. But as I say, by the time this video comes out, you'll be you'll be, you'll be been and gone. We might even be into we Christmas by then. Hey. We got coffee. We got a coffin. We've got a coffin. It doesn't jump out on the kids yet. Yeah. So that's it. So without further ado, let's get down dirty and let's try and put this Ransom Ajax Mark IV uh, back together. But did I? Right, so here is the Ransom Ajax Mark IV, which is currently uh, all done, laid out as I wanted it. It's just been sitting here drying in the uh, in the heat of the shed. <clears throat> all done, cylinder sharpened, uh, cylinder all been painted up, haven't sharpened it. Um, it was working quite well beforehand, so not bother touching that. It's all laid out exactly as I want it. First thing I need to do is get it all cleared out of the way. <clears throat> and I think the first thing I need to do is put the roller together. That's going to be the hardest thing to do because um, it wasn't the, the easiest to take out. So once a roll has been, we can then move on. But I shall show you step, step by step as we go through a video. And hopefully uh, you guys have a bit of a better idea how to take these apart and put them back together in the future. Okay, so I think we're, we're sort of half set up here. I need to get some gloves because I'm going to need to put some grease on this machine as we go. Um, just to help it uh, slide into place. I've got a feeling it, it's, it's all been cleaned up so it, it should go back. Um, tighter than uh, uh, looser than, than what it did beforehand let's double check my mic is turned on so i've got some grease here uh, and i've got some gloves the first thing i want to do is put the shaft into the roller and then we'll worry about greasing that up later on um so it has got its own gre grease ports there anyway so the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have your roller around the right way because it is ratcheted and from what I remember, when you roll it backwards, it ratchets, which is that way, which is a, the, the backwards momentum, um, and it locks off when it goes forward, and which cuts the cylinder in. So make sure that your ratchet, ratchets go anti-clockwise, okay? So it'll be in that orientation, like so. That's how it's gonna go. And this shaft then goes through, and uh, the non, the non the edge with, with, no, with no threads on it, that goes in, into there like so okay so the first one we'll do i think is we need to remove 
pardon me, you need to remove these little tiny bolts here on the inside of the roller. We'll take that one out and take his buddy out as well. And then I also want to remove the little tiny grub screw. And this will be done on both. Because I want to take the actual ratchet out. beforehand because I was it's gonna get caught. There's a ratchet all, all inside, all been cleaned up looking nice. But that taper edge here has got to go through here like that and all the way through. So you'd be using a bit of a hammer on this. I'm gonna put some grease on just to help it on its way. In fact what I might do now I will put. I will, I will try grease first. If not, I've got some of that Terrell stuff, which is quite good gear. So I'm just going to lube that up with grease, just to try and get that just to run a bit better. And then we're going to put that into there. And then I want to find the taper, and the grub screw's got to line up. You see, so I'm going to get my soft blow mm. hammer. There's one. I'm just literally going to tap these threads in. Let's push that out already. Uh, that'll be okay. We can keep an eye on that. So that's gone through this side. That wasn't as hard as what I thought it was going to be, to be fair. I think that's what I thought I was going to put up more of a resistance. But I need to find the um, the actual grub screw uh, locator. Oh, that's gone through. There's the grub screw just there. There it is. So there's, there's your grub screw locator. I need to put these um, <coughs> these little tiny dogs back in. It's a bit fiddly fiddly, but then it is designed to be. They go back in. I think I want to fall out as I do it, no doubt. And I get my ratchet, which is that one. Bit of grease on there, just to help that locate. And then you've got a grub screw, grub screw port there against here, so that was what was all going together. And what it might pay to do actually is to put that all the way in and then just tap that grub screw in so it fixes into place first. I wasn't expecting that shaft to go in quite quite as well as that. I was expecting there'd be, there'd be a bit more resistance. tight. That's tight already. I'm not even started yet. Okay, to, so to drift this um, this cog onto this keyway locator, I'm going to get a socket, a big socket, so using a soft blow, and this is going to tap that all the way, so it goes all the way down. I've got a set of mole grips here, just to, just to hold it up against. All we're doing is tapping that down. Until you actually find the locator of that grub screw. We're, we're nearly there already. We're not far off. <clears throat> so it only wants a bit more tapping. It is a lot of it's cast, so go go a bit easy, cast an alley, so go a bit easy. I think we're about there. I'm just about seeing where that grub screw lined up beforehand. And I would say that would be about it there.
So we're happy with that. So I can actually see the grub, where the grub screw went beforehand. So that's good. So now what I want to do is very, very gently push my dogs back into place. Which are here. And it doesn't matter which way they go, I don't believe. And they just sit in on the outside of the metal clip so that they're forced out all the time. And I'll show you the orientation very, very shortly. So there's the orientation just there. Oh, it just popped out. But there's the orientation just there. So you see the metal clip actually forces the, um, the dog out all the time, okay? So that's your orientation. Sink that in, hold that into place. And now we can drift this shaft all the way down. Oh, I can't show you and do it at the same time. It's not allowing me to do that. So you've got to push the shaft down into this little tiny home. In fact, it may pay to take them little dogs out and we'll put them in after. Once it's sat in place. That's it. All right, push that down. It's a bit tricky. Because you've got the little tiny metal clips in the way. get something a bit thinner, a little pick or something just to get in there, just to bring the metal metal plates out of the way. There's one, and there's the other one, that's already in place. All right, that's now sat. So now what you can do is now put your dogs in, and they literally just sit in there like so and you'll feel them go down into place when we're locking, there's one. They are a bit fiddly. And there's two, so now they're locked in. Let me show your orientation just there for you, just so you've got it for your own references. There you go, there's your orientation, okay. Once that's in place, now these have got a grease nipple just here, which line up with the, with the um, the cylinder uh, with the roller so you can actually grease it up later on so what I'm going to do now I'm now going to put in place this little tiny metal plate and there's two holes there for it to go I'm going to put in the uh, the two bolts that we have and that will just secure it in place where it needs to be and then I'll put the grub screw in and that'll then hold it. And all you're going to do is follow the same process for the other side. So let me get these little two little bolts done up and put the grub screw in, and I'll come back once I've done that. Right, so that's the roller now in place, um, and all ratchets as it, as it should do, which is good. Just make sure it's running the right way, otherwise you'll be taking a whole lot apart and putting it back together again. You want to ratchet in reverse um, and lock forward when you're going forward, that way the cylinder will cut in as well. So that's the first part done. I shan't bore you with putting the second part in, but it's pretty much the same. Just make sure you line your grub screws up with, um, with uh, the right location grub, grub bolt and make sure your dogs are in place, and then you can then grease them up later on. If you want to take the um, grub screw out, and remove the plate to grease up to make sure you are getting grease fruit via this little tiny hole then do so. Okay, quick little tip for you. I've got uh, the roller together, uh, but I'm just drifting in the, the, the last part of it, so to speak. Um, but my socket that I was using to drift all the way down is now bottomed out, okay? But this has sort of got quite some way yet. Now it can't come out the other side as long as you tip it up onto its end and knock it, and knock it that way around. So what I decided to do or what I'm thinking of doing, <coughs> is I've got a, uh, an axle stand inside sleeve, fit that over the top, and with a soft blow hammer, you can then knock that all the way down to where it needs to be. So let me get it whacked down into place and I'll show you once I've done it. And there you go, just with about three or four good sized whacks, um, that, that's gone down into place now. And now I can put my grub screw into here, put my dogs and my clips back in. Don't forget that the, um, with regards to your clips, you want to have it so that your um, your clip goes in 
sits into place and it is the short leg that goes up against the casting and the longer leg goes up against the cog on the clips, okay? On the springs. And then you can then put your dogs in over top of a little tiny metal clip, like so. So they are always continuously forced out. So they ratchet round, uh, but then they lock into place when you, when, you, when you go back the other way, okay? So I get those fitted in and get the grub screw all in and all that sort of good stuff and I'll come back to you. Right, so that's that rolling now, all fitted, yes, a hole, yes, that's where you put your grease through there. Um, so now it goes, foot, locks in forwards and now rotates nice. backwards, okay? There you go. Nice. So that's that done. Next thing I want to do is get a little tiny bit of grease. Okay. Grease, and we're going to put that just inside that little tiny bushing just there, not too much. Just nice? enough, okay. just a wet whistle, so to speak. Mm -hmm. A rag. Percy. Percy? Yeah. Well, Percy for train? Yeah. All right. And then we're going to slide this um, end bracket okay. onto the roller. Now, bear in mind, we had two... Okay. All right, buddy. We had, we, got, we had two really, really big washers that went on either side of the roller, which I'm just obtaining now. Okay. This is a bit of spacing. So these big washers, they went on all the way down like so and like so. And then this plate here, uh, that goes onto this roller. That sits onto there. We may have to drift it slightly. So we may have to literally undo them grub screws and bang that shaft through just a touch more because it is already binding here. And it should go all the way all the way flush. So we're not, we're not quite home yet with this roller. I thought we were nearly there, but we've got a bit more to go yet. So it wants just a slight tap. So I'm gonna undo these grub screws, both sides, and just tap that through just a touch more. So give us two ticks and I'll be back. Okay, so what I've done is I left the grub screws out and I just bashed that um, cylinder, uh, sorry, the shaft through a bit more. So just so I've got a bit of play here. Uh, it's a bit of, bit of um, uh, jiggly pokery to figure it out because you don't, you don't want that to bind, you see. So I'll leave the grub screws out for now until I know exactly what we're doing. I and mean, I can nip them up a bit later on uh, as and when required. So I want to try and fit the other side to it as well so that uh, we don't get no binding and we're about 100% uh, equal on, on both, both sides of the shaft, um, which I think we are at the moment. So um, I'm, I'm quite happy with how, how it's sitting. Uh, as long as when we fit the other side to it, uh, that all marries up because uh, you don't want nothing rubbing on this, uh, on this, uh, on this bodywork here. So that I believe it to be, to be correct. So hopefully we're, we're, we're sort of halfway home. I put that nut on there just to save that thread and banging that thread as well. So, right, on to the next step. Okay, so mistake number one, um, and I thought I'd bring it to your attention rather than someone pointing it out to me, is that actually this is a piece that goes on this side of the machine with a bar on it, and this side is a piece that goes on with the, um, with the gearing. Okay, so that's mistake number one. So I'm about to bash that shaft back the other way now. Uh, I don't quite yet know until we get it all on. So that goes on to there, yeah I do, look, see. So now that shaft will come all the way back. So that's mistake number one. Let, as you're looking from the back of the mower, left hand side is the one with the bar on, uh, which does not take the gearing on. Uh, that now makes a bit more sense. <clears throat> and then this one here is the one that actually goes on with, uh, with the gearing, uh, that'll go on inside there. So yeah, I had made a mistake, um, but obviously it's been a little while since I've had it apart, so uh, you just have to bear with me. So this actual shaft here now has to come all the way back That will slide quite easily because it's all greased up. So just literally just keep fitting this to it, just so you can get some kind of some kind of guide. I think we'll try that. See how that looks. And all I'm going to do is just offer this on. Just so you can sort of see how much play you've got each each side. So as you can see, I've, I'm biased. <clears throat> I'm biased this side. So you need to marry it up so that both are are equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my nut back on, which is a, a left hand thread, I believe. Put my nut back on. That's it. And now I'm going to drift this so that both are of the same the same distance apart. Okay. And just keep moving that up so you get the same distance apart. Okay. 
that's not a million miles out. Once I close that, close that roller up as well, that's not a million miles apart. <clears throat> so we're not we're not far off. I uh, just, just keep tapping so I get it equal, and I'll come back to you once I've done it. Okay, I now think I'm there. Um, I've managed just to just to tap it forward, towards and forwards, you know, what have you, and just get roughly the same distance between the two. Now it will only go so far because of his packing washers anyway. But now that's done, what I can now do is take the bodies apart again for the final time, hopefully. And I can now attach those grub screws where they need to be. It's gonna be about there. Yeah, that's not a million miles away from where it was before. That's cool. So now we're pretty much there. Those grub screws now go back in and that will now lock in uh, that, that, that shaft so that now the shaft will only spin when I want it to, but the, um, the actual uh, rollers won't separate. There's a little tiny gap there, not a lot, just enough just so it, uh, they can twist um, independently because it is a split, split um, roller. So grub screws back in and then move on to the next step. Right, we're about done now. They're all now locked into place. We can now get our uh, far side assembly in place and we can now get our, our near side assembly in place. <coughs> that all sits up into there, like so. So we're happy with that. What I may do now is I may put the, um, the back chassis um, nameplate in place and also the bed knife cutter. I think they're the two next projects we need to put in place. Because <clears throat> it will just give it a bit more stability. Uh, that went round that way. That sat into there. Should be a little tiny locating pin for that. That sat in there like that. Yeah, happy with that. And then the bed knife cut goes underneath of the uh, mower, like so. Uh, Round up upside down. Make sure we get this right, Mick. That way, I'll say. Oh, no, that way, that way. There we go. That goes on there like so. We get that bolted down gently just into place, and that will then keep all that together, hopefully, that's the next thing. So four bolts, let's get that done. There's a bed knife cutter now in place. It's only just in there loosely, okay, it's not in there tight. I think I still need to put bash this little tiny um, shaft through just a touch more, because the roller is just splitting ever so slightly, but I don't mind the gap. We'll see how far that gap actually goes once we screw it all down tight, but I might come back to that in a little while. But that should be no biggie. <coughs> um, but I want to get it done before I start mucking about um, with the cylinder and what have you. So if that roller splits any more, then uh, it could be a bit of an issue going on there. But uh, it, it probably is just wants to go and just knocking through just a touch more, just so that, that does lock in place a bit tighter. So we'll see about that in two ticks. So just had a quick look at that cylinder, and that's as far as it will split. So you've got a nice, nice, nice decent sized gap there. We may have to come back to it when we go to knock in this um, cotter pin, but the cotter pin does have enough gap uh, to fit the gear. So the next thing I want to do is bring the cylinder in because that's going to be the hardest, one of the hardest things to fit is the cylinder because it's under tension. So we want the cylinder in place. That can come back later on. Cylinder in place. Um, and I want two springs. Two springs that fit on. And then there was two... Two bolts will go on top of there. So that's all That's all there, isn't it? Yes, yeah, cool. So, <clears throat> let, me just, let me just off the cylinder into place. And then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, and what you want to do is put these little tiny springs. These springs will seat down. Let me just show you. Put the cylinder down out of the way for a minute. These little springs just sit down in, in here. One there and one there, a little tiny seat for them. And then on the bottom of this um, uh, cylinder, there's a little tiny niblets just there for them. And they just sit in, they just sit onto the little tiny seats into there like so. It's a bit tricky to get them in. It, was, it, wasn't, very, uh, it wasn't very easy getting them out. So let me try and get them fitted and uh, I'll show you how to do it. Right, so now we're ready to offer the cylinder in. The cylinder will go this way round because it's got threads on it here which need to be threaded onto the gear. Now what I may have to do is I may have to 
um, take the bed knife cutter off this side, okay? Purely because I need to split this, split this, um, I'll tell you in a minute. I need to split this, um, this chassis up just a touch. That's why I haven't buttoned it all down nice and tight. Just trying to find the socket. I had a nice little Whitworth socket that fitted that. There it is there, I think. I think that's the one. I can't remember now. The tip it up onto its bum. Is that the one? Yeah. So I'm just going to literally just going to loosen off this um, bed knife cutter off of one side. Watch it all fall down and mark it, mark itself now. There it goes. So remove the, just one side of bed, the bed knife cutter. And then that way you can then remove this part of the chassis. And then this cylinder, it's gonna have this spring goes underneath here and sits down into there. And that just sits into place. Even what you might need to do, you might need to adjust this bolt out so it comes all the way out first, okay? You might need to do that. I've got an arraignment of sockets today. Absolute load of sockets. <clears throat> So I'm just going to back off this height adjustment. Although it did come out at that, at that angle, I'm just going to back that off just a touch more. Just so it's flush. That's it. And then we can get the spring in its seat. So it just sits in there nicely. Like so. Push it up true. This one here could probably do adjusting as well. I can always touch a paint up where I've marked it if need be. That's part and parcel of it. You're gonna get that spring to sit underneath there as well. And it's a question then of putting it all back together without any bits falling off. So offer it into its place on that one. Lift the cylinder, hold that into place, and slowly but surely guide all that in. That went in there, but I haven't got my spring in. It's just little by little, just got to be encouraged and dropped. That's it, that likes it. What don't we like here? That's all in. You pretty much get the gist of it, what I'm trying to do. Just trying to line it all up so it all goes in together and eventually it will just literally, it's stuck on that bed knife cut, that's what it's stuck on. That's it, there it goes. And that one here as well. Guys, that's going. It's stuck somewhere. It's stuck somewhere, people. I think it's on a bed knife cutter, but you can see what I'm doing. Just marrying it all up so it all sits into place. And eventually it'll just bite. And once it bites into place, you know you're there. I think it's caught on that bed knife cutter. It is going though. So let me just fiddle about it a bit more and uh, I'll get it into place and then we'll be, uh, we'll be rocking and rolling. Right, so bed knife cutter is now finally in and the blaze on. It, it was a bit of a pickle, I'm gonna admit. I, was, I seem to have lost um, sort of two or three mil. And what I had to do, I just had to whack, just give it a bit of a whack, um, just to push it all in nice and tight. And now it has all finally gone in, which I'm happy with. Um, my ratchets aren't ratcheting no more. Oh, we are. Bigger part. Here we are. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Um, so now what I've got to do is I've got to put a nut on here onto the retaining bar, which holds that. I've got to um, then assemble the gears and uh, bring the cylinder down um, 
so it touches a bed knife. So first thing what I want to do, I think, is I'll put a little tiny nut onto there. That'll just support the chassis, so that's all in place. And then we can start to try and reassemble some of these gears. Right, so next, uh, we're on to gearage. Uh, now we should have here somewhere, <laughs> oh, so I lost any bits. Uh, so a little tiny, 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 tiny little cotter pin, which I'm not seeing anywhere. Have I lost it? Uh, let's have a look over my bits and bobs. Oh, there it is. Thought I'd lost it. I haven't though. Well, I know I've lost it, but you know what I mean. So a little tiny, tiny, tiny little cotter pin goes inside the main gear housing. Just like so. That might just want a bit of a encouragement to go in. So we get a little tiny punch. Mine the paintwork. There it goes. About half and half, which is good. I'm gonna be packing this grease later on, okay? When we, when we come to, come to a finalize. So lines up here and here. Just make sure it's, it's perfectly lined up and that should find its own little way. You've got to be tapped down in there, so if it doesn't go down, don't just give it a wallop, because you need to make sure that your keyway is absolutely um, half and half, and if it ain't half and half, then it ain't going to like it. It has got a slight bend to that little cot pin there, which is not making things any easier. So about there. And it should go all the way down. That's it, I think that's gone. Yeah, that's got him, that's in. So that's that one. And then you've got this little intermediate gear. That goes, that just slides on. And then you've got uh, the little gear, which is that one. I come with a bushing. That bushing was actually on the back of here when it first come on. So that bushing tells me that goes into there. Right, with your main gear now in place, your big gear now in place, as it should be, um, what you want to do is this gear goes on here, okay? like that, and then this gear, uh, it's got a little tiny lip on the back of it, but actually that's the front of it, it goes on that way, and that stops that other gear from coming out. Okay, and then literally that just winds on. Well, it actually, it just sits in there, like so. You get then a little tiny circlip, or, or spring clip, spring washer it had. That goes onto there, and then that one then goes onto there. And then that one can then be done up. And then you also got on your back one, uh, the big nut, which is a left-hand thread on that one. That's the wrong way around, Mick. That way around, I'll say. That's a left-hand thread. And that's the normal thread. Okay, so I'll get them done up, and I'll be back to you in two ticks. Okay, so gearing is now all in place, and as it should be, uh, washers on there, and don't forget this gear goes sort of back to front to stop this gear from coming out. You see, stops it from jumping. So now, by rights, if I just pack a few little tiny bits away, uh, we should now, in fact, be um, ready, just to quickly just dry run test. Bear in mind the cylinder is not uh, actually in, in lined up yet with the, um, the bed knife cutter. But now, if we push this forward, lift it up, push it forward, cylinder spins, drag it backwards, it should click. Yeah, it does. Look at that. What a lovely thing. That's good, All right, happy with that. Pack it with a grease, and then what you then do is put the, um, the little side cover on it. So let me get it packed up with grease, I'll be back to you in two ticks. Right, that's the side cover now put on. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm actually gonna remove this um, off of the bench, very carefully about jamming my fingers in the cylinder. And I wanna bring up the handlebars. Uh, I should be adjusting the cylinder either later on or in a different video, I think. I was afraid it was going to be, going to be a bit long-winded. Uh, there's the handlebars, and it wants this, uh, this little tiny joint here to go on. That one there. Um, I'm not sure which way around it went, actually, to be fair. But I do know that the, the nuts would be on, on the, the bolt, the nuts would be on, on the bottom, is what I'd say. So I'm going to loosely, just loosely fit these into place.
sort of all the way in. And then this one here will go on the bottom. I'm guessing it goes that way around, so it curves inwards. That must be a bit slacker. Now obviously, you know, this is going to get knocked and about a bit, so you know the paintwork is uh, is not essential. But I would like to try and keep it as a as not as not scraped as much as possible. So they should all fit into there, like so. And I'll just turn that over and um, make sure that I don't lose any bits when I do so. A quick move over. And notice I'm, you're doing all this on one of those um, sleeping mattresses I've got. It just stops anything getting knocked about. So that's roughly where it's going to go. So let me get those nuts tightened down and I'll be back to you in two ticks. So this is one bit I've actually been looking forward to doing and that's actually uh, putting the handlebars back on. Got tools everywhere. Tools everywhere. That's a big old tie up after this. This is the problem with doing restorations. I've got two bolts to fit in. They go around the either side of the, um, either side of a sign. Just loosely going to fit that. Are we going? To, yes, Riley. You? you got a surprise for me. Yeah. What surprise have you got for me then, buddy? Oh, check me out, Riley. Boy, got me a roll. Do you make it all by yourself? Uh, no. No. Who I, made it for me? Nana. Nana made me some tiger rolls. Oh, lovely job. You had yours yet? Have you? Mm, not yet. What are you having then? Not much. Not much. Try. Oh yeah. What? Hmm. Yummy. I love it. Before. Tell Nana thank you very much. So I've got a bolt here to put on. That's going to go on the lowest one possible. I'm just going to loosely goosely fit that. Trying that to run in there without scratching anything else up. This is the hardest part of the restoration is putting it all back together and not damaging nothing. Wants to go about there. Let me just test it first. Yeah, that's got it. So that can then go into there. Just going to loosely just fit just to get it started. I want a washer. Now, I do remember dropping a washer in the early part of the restoration. I never did find it. So let me just find another little washer. It don't matter if it's a spring washer, I suppose. A spring washer would help it, wouldn't it? Right. This one and this side can go on. That's lush. And I'll find a little ratchet just to just to nick that one up. Way too big, Nick. This is the issue when you've got loads of bits out, and these are all different size sockets. Because over the, over the years, obviously, some people have been in here having a having a, a restoration of their own. It might, it might have been restored fifteen times. So just trying to find the right size socket to fit that now. And I have been using quite a bit of Whitworth stuff as well whilst I've been mucking about. Yeah, Whitworth it is then. So thanks to my old buddy boy, Pete Frow, who gave me his granddad's set of Whitworths. He said, you can have a set of them, mate. I've got two sets. I didn't want to take them because they were his granddad's, but I'm not going to argue with the man if he, if he, if he insists. I'm just going to nick them up very, very gently. I'm not going to go too tight because I want to put the handlebars up in a minute. Mine are tiger rolls, which Nana made me. And there was one bolt missing on here from when I first got the, from when I first got the project. I've got a nut and bolt here, so I need to find another nut and bolt. <clears throat> yep. Now this one will lift up. And that go all the way through there. That should have a wash on the back of that, Mick. 
that we don't uh, we don't scrape nothing. Ooh. That's it. So that'll go on into there. We like that a lot. So we'll get a little tiny nut onto that. Of which I've just a second dropped. The chances of finding that now are going to be quite slim. But I've got it. That's got to go all the way in there. I might have to loosen that one off slightly. Just so it brings that edge back out again. Gives it a bit more play. In fact, that's going to make it worse. Now you can see the weight is starting to be lifted up now because there's no grass box on it. So I'm going to lift that handle up, slacken that one off, because for me it's going to have to be on the highest setting possible. I mean, roughly there. So you will get some paint. You will get some paint scrapes now because obviously we're uh, we're moving stuff about. So that, that's just part and parcel of it. You just can't odds that. So I've got to find one more nut just to go on the back of this. Um, oh, I've got a parcel apparently. You got a parcel? So it came, did it? What your what your Halloween one? No, it's not Halloween. It's you. Okay, we'll have a look in a minute. What's your dad? All right, we'll see. So let me find another nut just to fit on the back of that whilst I eat my roll, and then uh, I'll come back to you in two ticks. I him. Okay. Handlebars now all on. I put a new bolt in there. So that's now done. So I think, all apart from um, greasing me roller up, which I've got, I've got to do yet. And that's easy done, but just buy there's a quiz nipple down in there and one down in there. Um, all that's left to do is put a grass box on it, pretty much. Now I have got to adjust the cylinder, which I should probably do in another video, um, just so we can uh, see it working as it should do. But yeah, that looks pretty good. Everything is as it should be. Look at that. Lovely smooth action. So now, I've got to put on the rollers as well. And then I've got to put on the uh, the grass box. Now the rollers itself, I might get some new rollers for it yet. Haven't decided. I may just literally put these on a, on a bolted thread and just literally just sand them back. But the rollers are actually good. They're not rotten at all. Um, rollers for these are about 35, 40 quid, okay? So I may leave those as is. I've also got to put in um, the deflector shield, which I think, think goes this way. Not 100% certain actually. Which way around it goes? It might go that way around then. And it'll look, no, that doesn't like going in there. That's too thick. So that's got to go in that way around there. And I think it needs to have those bolts removed get any go in there. Is that going to go or not? Yeah, it will. Fingers. Oh, that sits in place. That's all the way down. That's in its slot. That's in its slot. Yeah, that all marries up. So that's good. So that now that should inhibit the, uh, the cylinder, which it doesn't. So we're happy with that. I've got the, the roller spindle. That's been cleaned. So the last bit I'm looking for, for this whole restore, which I can't find, can't find the bits. Um, it should all be put together. Where was it? Let me try and dig out the uh, the roller uh, guides. I can't find them at the moment, but they will be in the shed here somewhere. They're all sprayed up. So I've got no idea where they are at the moment, but I shall find them in two ticks. Okay, I'll give this the rolls a bit of a sand. What I may do is um, sand them off after the project and um, give them a bit of a varnish up. Uh, it doesn't need new rollers as far as I'm concerned. So the rollers go onto the spindle, like so. And they all look much better once I've had a bit of a sand up. Uh, that one went on that side. So that's just got to sit into there. How far has that gone in? It wants to go quite away. That goes onto there. 
And then that one there goes onto there. I'll give him a bit of a tap. I mean, all that's left to do is undo these nuts and bolts, which have been sprayed. I remember one of these was a bit tight to, to get on, from what I remember. Loosen that off, that's the way it came off. Like that. Now this one, this side, I remember it being a bit of a pickle because it's a square bolt on here. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not uh, someone's just bunged it on like an old gutter bolt. So you just have to work with what you've got. That goes round. That then sits into place. Without scratching a lot. A bit more space, please, Mick, would be good. Open it up a touch so it sits in there. Go on, a bit more. Touch more there, that's it there. And it was on setting number two, which was setting number one. You, you, number two was visible, from what I remember. So that must have gone in that way around like so. Like that. And number two was visible. It was on setting number one cut, I believe. That going to there. And this one here. I'm putting the bolt so the bolt goes on the out, the nut goes on the outside. Because uh, you don't want the bolt sticking through onto the cylinder. Now, what I might do with that, actually, that wants a little bit of a chainsaw file in there. Because that bolt hole is just a little bit too big for what it wants to be. So I'm going to do that very, very quickly. So I'm going to take that off without damaging anything. It goes. Just going to run a chainsaw file down through there just to smooth the edges out. Give us two ticks. Okay, I just run a little chainsaw file in there just to take some of them burrs out. So now, it's just sitting there a bit, bit happier. Let's put that bolt through. Is that going to fit now? Yeah, it fits better. So that wants a bit of a tap. Just to bring that through. In fact, I might take that spring washer off of there. It doesn't need a big spring washer on there. We'll put that flat face washer on there. That give me a bit more bolt in, a bit more bolt to work with. Yeah, lovely. A bit of a tap of a hammer, I believe. Just to give me a bit more bolt. There you go. Spring washer on. Put that little nut onto there. Now we had number two visible just on the cut. So that wants there. Let me get that done up nice and tight and I'll be back to you in two ticks. Okay, so all that's now left to do is two things. One is to bring the cylinder down to the uh, bed knife, which is just done by um, adjusting these two together. And then what you can then do um, is get some paper underneath here and uh, just slowly turn the cylinder around just so it starts to cut on the bed knife evenly. So just by adjusting both two, it's not a big thing to do. I'll try and do it in a bit. But now it's all back together. Oh, it, does look, it does look lovely. It's just such simple engineering, you know, really, really easy engineering. And now it's left to do is to put the crown, the crown onto the head. Is that going to fit on there, Mick? It's a little bit obscure because it is a bit, it's been on there, you know, it's a bit old. It was a bit of bending, maybe, a bit of therapy. I might just have to bend one of them lugs on there because they, they are slightly on the uh, on the screw whiffy. Let's just try and bend one of them round a touch. That's it, just to bring it a bit squarer. That's a bit better. And then down it goes. And there you go. There is a ransom Ajax, all done. Mrs. P's hiding behind the door. Wave, Mrs. P, just want to see your hand. Yeah, she's hiding behind the door, just want to see her. Um, there's a ransom Ajax, all done. I'll take it outside, have a quick look around it, and I will just try and adjust that cylinder very, very quickly by pushing them two adjuster bolts down onto the bed knife. 
Right, so I'm going to adjust the cylinder. Um, I'll, I'll just show you how to do it, rather than actually do it, I'll do it myself off camera, otherwise this video is going to be 45 hours long. As you can see, down in here, um, there's your back, your bed knife cutter just here, okay? And there's a mahoosive gap, a massive gap, about five mil between the cylinder and, and the bed knife itself, okay? Now that's never going to cut anything like that, so all you've got to do is bring these bolts down evenly, um, just and just so it starts to touch the bed knife, starts to touch it. You don't want it grinding. Um, once you've done that, you can then um, put some paper in and then fine tune the bolts to, um, as you go. Bring the bolts down evenly uh, so the cylinder doesn't come down on the drunk. And then with, with some bits of paper, you better cut the, cut the paper with a cylinder and bed knife and you should be golden. Okay, so I now have started to adjust the cylinder. And I've now got the cylinder off to around about, oh, I'd say it's about two and a half mil off of the, uh, the bed knife cutter. So I'm just starting to bring it down. I remember what I said to you, you don't want this cylinder touching the bed knife. It's not how these things work. That's about half a mil off on both sides. So the cylinder itself is not catching, okay? Get yourself some bits of paper. A bit of A4 paper and cut yourself some strips. Let me get the strips cut and I'll be back to you. Okay, so what I had to do was uh, just had to drop the cylinder onto the bed knife because there's a bit of paint on this cylinder as you see. So I just had to drop it down, get a bit of a quick little grind off. Um, so now <coughs> I've got my, my bit of paper, there you go. It's in the half. Pop it onto the cylinder, just there. Bring it down. So there's a, there's a paper look. Cut, okay. Down to here, bring it down, cut. So that cylinder is now, in my opinion, just slightly too tight on the cylinder. So what you want to do is back that off, quarter of a turn at a time. Just to keep the cylinder true. I'm going to try that. And what you're looking for is a happy medium between the two between the two bolts. You want the cylinder to obviously glide. So it's not cutting there. So the quarter of a term is just slightly too much. It's just starting to bed down. So what you want to do is go back on again and do quarter of that turn. So going back up just under quarter of a turn. It's starting to go nearly there, but no cigar yet. So I go a bit more. We're doing it back up again now. Little tiny increments at a time. <clears throat> and what you're looking for is that cylinder just to make contact. So, oh, that's nearly there. Nearly. 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 So go up a bit more. And you just want to bring that cylinder in together just so you get that nice even contact. That feels good. Here you go, there's a cut. Not quite there. So that means we're coming down slightly drunk and a cylinder there. This middle part here is not cutting. So that is either telling me one or two things, either the cylinder is actually bent or there's too much paint on the middle of a cylinder for it just to make contact just yet. I know it's cutting, there you go, I've just cut. So cut there, cut there, no cut, cut. So we're there. I'm happy with that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that cylinder is where it needs to be. Just retrieve your bits of paper out of there, I'll meet you outside and we'll go for a little tiny cut. Right, what? Ransom Ajax, now finished. And there she is. There she is all done. Want a quick little look? Yeah. Don't, don't touch it, Rider Boy. Leave it be, buddy. Let's have a quick little look at it. Compared to how, what it looked like when it first turned up. There you go. All done, dusted, finished. Uh, I did manage to grease the cylinder up of uh, the roller. I had a bit of a problem though. When I put the um, greaser on there, um, the, the uh, grease gun didn't want to come off. 
which is a bit of a swine. Uh, they are just push, they're just push ones, these are. They're not um, threaded on, they're, they're just push ones. Okay, so there's the uh, Ransom Ajax all now finished off. Let's have a look, look see, what it's, um, see what it cuts like. Because it's all very well at looking good, but it's got to cut pretty well as well. No doubt Riley Boy will do a little dance for you, because that's what he's been doing recently. Thank you, buddy boy. Right, mind your head down, buddy boy. Okay, here we go. And we'll just see what it cuts like. I'll take the, the box off, just so we can see it. And then I'll do a little run up the garden with it and see if it's actually collecting. Now, maybe on a quite low, quite a low setting for my lawn, we should see. So it ratchets back as it should do and goes forward. Look at that. It's, it's on a very, very low setting. So it does want adjusting up slightly. Oh my lord, that cuts better than my ransom Marcus. Does a proper job. So what I might do, I might just, just set it up slightly because it is on a very low cut. Let me get it readjusted to number two or three and I'll put a grass box back on it and then I'll take it out of the garden and we'll give it a run and throw some grass in the grass box. Right, so I'll put a grass box on. I have adjusted the height ever so slightly, but my grass is quite long. Just bear that in mind. Cylinder mowers are, are, are finishing mowers, not, uh, not designed for long grass. So let's just put your grass box back on. I'll turn it around. And I'll just, I'll just find a quite a short piece to do. I'll bring you guys over with me. Let's take off the old quick release, it might be a bit easier. <clears throat> All we're going to do is angle you down, angle but dangle you, down to a grass box. And I'm just go for a little tiny run with it, see how it does. Nice. That little line there, look, it's got a nice little line in the lawn. Look at that, collecting beautifully as it should do. Yeah. And a uh, nice, nice little low cut too. I wouldn't like to do my entire lawn with this though. So that's why I've got a 30 inch Dennis. So that's cool, super, super happy with that. Ransom Ajax now, all completely finished. I'm happy with how it turned out. Uh, from where it was to where it is now, night and day. Yes, could have a new set of rollers, possibly. But uh, for, for what they cost, for what they cost, um, I don't think it's really worth doing. Um, but yeah, overall, super, super happy. Okay, so there you go, Ransom Ajax uh, Mark IV, video number three, all done. So you now seen, um, hopefully you'll see videos one to three of how to um, take apart, um, how to restore, and how to um, put the uh, Ransom Ajax back together, which is good. What are you doing facing that way for? <laughs> This is why you donut. <laughs> um, I picked that little lawnmower up for around about a tenner. What are you doing? And, I don't know, I nothing. And it cost me around about 30, 30 to 50 pound in, in paint and bits and pieces just to get it all done. So what do you think, Riley, do you like it? Yeah. Riley, Riley said to me, where's the pull cord, Daddy? I said, there's no pull cord on there, mate. It's an old mower. Um, so that's good, a little 12 inch. I should put it up for sale because there's no point in keeping it because uh, my garden is just not big enough. Uh, uh, my garden's too big for it, so there's, there's no point in keeping it. So it will be up for sale. If anyone's interested, just um, email me up and um, we'll work a price out. Uh, nice little vintage uh, Ransom Ajax Mark IV for you if you're interested. If not, it'll go up on eBay next year. So hopefully you enjoyed the episode of Mixed Mows and Mower Man and I'll sort of restore for you. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or whack the old bell. That way you'll tell one done a video or two more on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until people don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy. <laughs>